Hi, my name is Scott Salet. My pronouns are he, they. I work across sustainability and well-being, and these are a few chapters of my story. Throughout childhood and adolescence, I experienced some physical, verbal, and sexual abuse, which was one of the things that started me down my journey of healing myself. It was looking at how I could shift my mindset from feeling like a victim to starting to feel more like a survivor, and then wondering actually how could I take what I had learned to go out and, and support other people who may have had a similar experience, helping them feel safe, helping them feel seen, because I know what it feels like to, to not feel those things. And I feel that loneliness is, is a pandemic in, in many ways. So many people are, are alone, but they don't really sit with that feeling. It took me actually until I was ready to end my life that I said, this cannot continue. I need to reach out for help. I had, thankfully, people who were there for me. And so the way that I can honor them is actually by paying that forward to, to others, um, whether it's through yeah, listening or mentoring someone, or like I said, just, just being there for someone in, in that time of need. I think it's, it's honoring everyone that's helped us along our own healing journey, because you can't always pay it back to them, but you can absolutely pay it forward. When people are starting to feel resourced, when they're coming out of maybe a challenging period, maybe that's also not the time to quite yet support others, but you can start to share your story. You sharing your story can help them feel like, I'm not alone in this. Others have been there as well. And that is a gift. Your story is a gift. Your vulnerability is your courage. So that's why I'm always encouraging people to stand in their strength, stand in their light. I'm a really big uh, advocate of people just creating like little groups. It doesn't have to be big, expensive or formal, but how can you create little pockets in your friendship group or your workplace or your community where you can just bring people together and say, hey, there's, there's no rules here. It's just bring all of you. Whatever you're bringing to this space, you're super welcome. That's also what I found through We Create Space is this sense of like, Wherever you are is exactly where we want to meet you. And that's why I love being part of this community because I have had days when I was not in my, you know, super glowing light. And I didn't feel like I had to pretend because pretending is exhausting. Community for me is psychological safety. It means that I can show up there as I am, however my mood is, or if I'm feeling joyful or challenged and just be supported and witnessed and held. So I have found community through, of course, all the We Create Space gatherings. I serve on the Global Advisory Board um, and also come to the networkings and, and gatherings. And I do not like networking on principle, but the, this does not feel like networking. This, this doesn't feel like, oh, you know, I have to really, you know, lean in with a job title and try and figure out how to extract value from each other, no. It's just really, really lovely people in a room together. There's a lot of, a lot of care and intentionality around uh, making sure that people with different sensory needs um, are also welcome. The more spaces we can make where people are able to come and just be, we're giving them that energy back to actually sit with themselves, stay with themselves, work on themselves, and hopefully heal. Some leadership qualities that I've been able to learn as a result of these experiences is creating safe spaces. Instead of assuming that the space is safe because I perceive it to be, is asking people from diverse communities, backgrounds, experiences, what do you need to really show up here? Do you wanna show up here? How could we improve it? And then continuing to take on that feedback and, and improve things over time. I'd say some other leadership qualities is knowing when to balance stamping into the spotlight and being an advocate or being an ally, but also when to step away and share the spotlight or share the microphone, pass it on to someone else. So I'm always trying to look who is not represented in this room, who is not included in this space, why? And can I invite them? Can they be my plus one? If I'm invited to speak somewhere or, or, or say something, do they need to hear me? Or actually, is it better if I bring someone else instead? Or maybe we can be in conversation together. There are so many crises facing the world today, whether that's climate, pollution, inequality, and I really believe that they're all connected in some way. 
And I feel it's because we've moved away from our interconnectedness, our interdependency, and we've moved towards separation. So believing that someone else is, is different than we are, believing that we don't have one shared home, which is our planet. And so I, I believe now that actually we have three homes. One is our body, you know, the other is sort of our, our heart or our spirit, and the third one is actually the, the planet that we all share. So the further we move away from any of those three homes, the more lonely, the more disembodied, the more distant we feel, and the less we actually want to protect those and nourish those. So I think the m more proximity we can create to, you know, ideally all three, but even if it's just one to start off with, and helping other people remember the feeling of being safe and being at home and being nurtured. We all crave that feeling and we've tried to find it in other ways, but it's never gonna be as satisfying as the real thing. I think that in order to move into the light, we often have to go through that dark night of the soul. <laughs> and sometimes you feel like you're just in the washing machine going around and around. But I th think my message is to always choose hope and then surround ourselves by people who remind us of that. Remind us that we can choose hope. Remind us of our beauty. Remind us of our brilliance. Some days you're the one doing the reminding, other days you're the one being reminded. I would love for everyone to find that hero within. I believe that we all have it and it's just a case of awakening it. And what an exciting thing to know actually that every challenge put in our path is something that is forging a new skill or a strength that we didn't even know we had. That for me is what actually makes me maybe cautiously optimistic about the challenges that I know I'll face in my life is because I really have to hope that after the edge of that storm, there'll be something there waiting. There'll be an oasis or there'll be someone waiting with a hug <laughs> or a cup of tea and it'll be myself. I'll get to meet myself in a new way. I'll get to meet myself and, and love myself in, in that new way.